Good morning, people. Watch him at 65. Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you a verse of scripture. It's in Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. That's Colossians. Let me give you the Gospels. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time. And sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you. Everything. Something did happen yesterday. Chris was right. And not too many people know about it. U.S. scientists and military have simulated dropping a nuclear bomb. They did a simulation. Dropping a nuclear bomb on Moscow and St. Petersburg to target Russia, Russian intercontinental ballistic missile launch silos in a major nuclear first strike exercise. Now, I did a video a few days ago, about a week ago, that the U.S. had did a uh, nuclear simulation. But it's awfully strange. I don't think this is the same thing. Because this just came out today. And it's not giving when they did this. So I don't know whether what what if this is talking about what I did a, a few days ago or a week ago that the U.S. had simulated something, or if this is this sounds like something different. So it says the exercise was conducted in anticipation of the transfer of two squadrons of nuclear capable F-35s to Great Britain. It is noted that along the way, all nuclear-capable F-35s in Europe will be equipped with the new nuclear bombs. Again, this just came out this morning on War News. It says, the United States decided to simulate nuclear strikes on Moscow and St. Petersburg with these weapons and predict the results. That is to count the number of victims among the inhabitants of the area. The reports uh, reports the American ma uh, magazine Newsweek. Now, <clears throat> it says the authors of the report pointed to the need to improve U.S. nuclear arsenal to contain China and Russia. Prediction of the B-6113 will not increase the number of total weapons in the U.S. nuclear arsenal. It will supply, it will simply provide greater flexibility in the use of existing capabilities. Now, if you remember, I did a video on this, talking about how many weapons, nuclear weapons, the U.S. actually have that are working. The B-6113 would have much greater impact much larger impact area and hit 24 times more powerful, 360 kilotons than the bomb dropped by the United States on Hiroshima in 1945. I did do a video on this. I talked about this. 
This goes into a little bit more detail. He goes on to say, in the event of a drop on the largest Russian megacities, the damage would be colossal. It is estimated, and this is what the U.S. came up with, this is an estimate, 311,480 people would be killed. Another 868,860 would be injured if Moscow is hit. Everything in a radius of just under one kilometer from the epicenter would turn to dust. If you hear something in the background, again, that's what's going on right now in Gaza. It says the explosion will destroy buildings and probably destroy everyone else within one mile radius. People within three kilometer radius will suffer from high levels of radiation and they'll be gone within a month. Another 15% of survivors will die shortly afterwards of cancer. In St. Petersburg, 360,150 people may be eliminated and another 685,900 people will suffer. That's their estimate. The fire from the explosion will burn for more than six hours, creating a deadly atmosphere over an area of nearly 170 square kilometers, about 10 to 15 times larger than in Hiroshima. The British confirmed the American simulations. Simulations of dropping 360 kiloton American bomb on Moscow show it would cause hundreds of thousands of casualties and around a million injuries and widespread devastation. So the U.S. Department of Defense has announced that the U.S. government is developing a new version of the B-61. Again, I did a video on this the other day. A new version of the B-61 gravity nuclear bomb, code name the B-6113, which will be better performing than the B-6112 and will replace a significant number of older bombs in this, of, this, of this class. In particular, the Pentagon stated that the decision to build this weapon was made in the context of recent developments and the changing security environment surrounding the proliferation and development of nuclear weapons at a time when both Russia and China are increasing their nuclear arsenals and therefore it becomes imperative for the U.S. military to take the necessary steps to strengthen nuclear deterrence. So the bulletin issued by the U.S. Department of Defense points out that the upgraded B-6113 gravity nuclear bomb will have the advanced safety and precision features of the B-6112 bombs, but will have an adjustable yield between 340 to 360 kilotons, like the B-617 type bomb, which will give the Americans the capability of highly destructive and effective nuclear strikes on underground targets with enhanced protection and armor that the enemy's ICBM launch silos with nuclear warheads. The U.S. Department of Defense has specified that the construction and development of the B-6113 nuclear gravity bomb will replace the older models. There was a warning issued to the U.S. Moscow did not leave the simulation of the Americans unanswered. The Russian Ministry of Defense has released a video of a launch of a RSM-56 Bulova intercontinental ballistic missile from a nuclear-powered submarine in the White Sea. It remains unknown when the exercise took place and the specific shot of the Russian Ministry of Defense did not release 
this information. And quite frankly, if this is a different thing that the U.S. did, because I had just done a video about a week ago that they had shot a missile. But it, was, it wasn't this. They're not given the time when this was done. Neither side is, neither the U.S. nor Russia. So I'm assuming this was recent, like this past week. Russia goes on to say it remains unknown when the exercise took place. According to the Russian Defense Ministry of Defense, as part of a final phase of, our, of the test program, the new nuclear power strategic missile submarine Imperator Alexander III successfully launched a Bulova intercontinental ballistic missile from the White Sea toward the Kamchatka Peninsula, Russian media said. I didn't even know this. This just came out. I didn't even know that Russia had did this. Unless they did it, like I said, because I did. I thought I did a video on something like this. It says the launch of this missile is the last element in the package of state tests after which a decision will be made on the submarine's acceptance into the Navy. The defense minister said in a statement on the Telegram messaging app, the intercontinental ballistic missile launched into the White Sea off Russia's northern coast hit a target thousands of kilometers away. The Navy has three Borai class submarines in service, one completing trials and three more under construction. Now, all of this is coming out today. Now, this came out on you, RT about Israel. So the U.S. wants Israel to clarify some comments that Netanyahu made. The administration of the U.S. president, Sleepy, has con contacted Israeli officials to demand a clarification of Netanyahu's claim that Israel will maintain security control of Gaza after the conclusion of his conflict with Hamas, according to Israeli media reports. The alleged misunderstanding between the allies was initially reported on Sunday by a state-run broadcaster and later confirmed to the Times of Israel by an unnamed U.S. official. According to the reports, Washington was perplexed by comments Netanyahu made about the uh, post-conflict future of Gaza. I just got a news flash here about Netanyahu. Hold on. I got to look that up. During a press conference on Saturday, the Prime Minister dismissed the possibility of the Palestinian Authority taking control of the enclave after the war. I did a video on this the other day saying that he, it's specifically what he said. I don't know why Washington can't get the hint. Insisting that there will not be a civil authority there that educates their children to hate Israel or to eliminate Israel, and that it still hasn't condemned Hamas over its attack. What's there to verify? There will have to be something else, but in any case, our security control, I stand by it, and I don't intend to give up, he insisted, reiterating the claim he made in an interview with ABC News on Tuesday.
They said that U.S. officials wanted their Israeli counterparts to explain to them what exactly he meant by security control. Despite, despite fully backing Israel and his push to eradicate Hamas, the Biden administration has repeatedly advised it against, saying, against staying in Gaza after the conflict. Earlier this week, U.S. Uh, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said that Sleepy still believes that a reoccupation of Gaza by Israeli forces is not good. My question is this. Who the heck gave the U.S. permission to give to tell Israel what to do? Under what authority does the U.S. have to tell Israel what to do? That's a good question. It says U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken suggested on Wednesday that steps to achieve a sustained peace, a sustained peace between the Israelis and Palestinians must include Palestinian-led governance and Gaza unified with the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority. In other words, a two-state solution. Palestinian Authority Mahmoud Abbas has said several times that the Palestinian Authority is ready to assume full responsibilities of Gaza after the conflict, but stressed that it should happen within the framework of a comprehensive political solution which includes the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Again, a two-state solution. The military solution to the crisis being pursued by Israel will not bring security and peace to anyone. This is what Abbas said. Now, so how they're going to try to stop Israel is right here. This just came out this morning also. Arab nations to cut oil supplies to Israel. Arab countries like Algeria and Lebanon propose to cut oil supplies to Israel in response to the onslaught in the Gaza Strip. Both Algeria and Lebanon also threaten severe economic and diplomatic ties with some Arab League nations that have relations with Israel, according to the diplomats. However, most Arab League countries and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation rejected their proposal at the joint summit in Saudi Arabia's uh, capital. So there's a video on here. I'm going to link all this in the description box, folks. Yeah, some things did happen. Absolutely. And they're coming out today. We're going to have another interesting week. This week coming up. Because now the U.S. is about to show its true colors. So I will link all this in the description box and find out what this article was that just came out off the Times of Israel. And I will be back later. Thank you.